Morning guys, it's Darren at Green Pro Clean Limited, window cleaning in Nottingham and Derbyshire. Today we are in the Waterfed Bowl Hospital in my garage. My poor Extreme 22 is up for a quick bit of surgery. I'm lying, that's an Extreme 25 as it happens. Um, nothing tragic, you'll be glad to hear. He's going to make it. All it is, is the clamp section has come loose. Ooh. And today it's decided it's going to jam itself back on. It's come loose from the top of the pole section. Uh, nice and simple is like that. Uh, only problem with that is, of course, when you're working, your pole swiveling against the action that you're using makes for a bloody hard job. So we're going to start out with a hit of isopropyl. We keep this stuff laying about the garage in quantity because uh, it's 99.9% .9 pure. Health and safety shit first. Don't try drinking this. Don't be a knobhead. It may say alcohol on the bottle, but yeah, it will kill you. So we get some of that on the rag, and uh, we're going to use that to just... Uh, take off any excess dirt that happens to be on the end here. Um, give it a quick clean and uh, it's, uh, I should have actually done all of this tomorrow when I dismantled the whole pole for its weekly cleaning but what we've done so far is we've removed the first top section and we've taken out the little clamp unit and we've given it a clean with the isopropyl there. I'm going to give it a little abrasion work and we're just going to take that off and uh, it may look like smoke coming out of there, it's not, it's just a bit of dust. Um, I'm going to take that down, take off any last stubborn bits. Uh, what I'm using, of course, is a spare old piece of triple uh, zero bronze wall and uh, handy for all sorts of jobs, including this one. So I give that a good rubbing down, and then we're going to, because most of it's now evaporated, we give it another good shot of the ISO, ISO propol there. Uh, we buy this stuff off eBay in. Uh, five one litre bottles like this cost us about 20 quid a time delivered but it lasts a good age other uses we'll cover in another video will be antifreeze and also removing sticky tar spots and uh, sellotape labels shit like that from window frames it's very handy for that too so uh, let's just get this cut off of here so now we've got this off of here we've already done a little bit of work on the inside of the clamp there so we'll give it another clean anyway just uh, poke your rag right up in there, give it a good squirm about, clean out all the crap that's in there. Oh, now get us going, there we go. Now, for doing this, you're going to need a two-part epoxy. And uh, luckily for me, uh, I phoned up Gardeners, uh, spoke to one of the lovely young ladies there, told her what I was up to, oops, my pole clamps come loose. And I was simply phoning up to ask if there was a particular type of two-part epoxy I should buy. Pole's still under warranty, it's not even six months old yet, so straight away they sent me out a little uh, sachet of their preferred two-part epoxy, I don't even know what it's called, it's just a two-part epoxy, and um, they also have a great instructional video on the YouTube on how to do this, but hopefully this is a good instructional video on how to do this, so uh, bear with me, I'm just going to find a little stirrer for me two-part epoxy there, so we've got that there, and then, uh, yep, we need a surface to mix our two-part epoxy on, boys and girls. Oh, bugger. Hadn't thought that part through. Let me find a bit of cardboard. Oh, nice thing about working in one's own garage. There's always bits of junk laying around somewhere. So now we've got a bit of a stirrer there. And we've got this uh, brilliant little thing clipped together here. Let's see about getting this opened. Ah, oh, there we go. Wife will have that for freezer bags later, no doubt. So we've got that open now. Now we just need a blade to cut it open. Out the old Stanley. And for some of you, this is uh, showing Granny how to suck eggs, really. Uh, but others out there will find a use for it. I'm doing it in real time, so you can see just how quickly uh, a repair can take. I mean, checking the clock on the video here, we're about four minutes in. And we're not going to need tons of this stuff, we're just going to need a couple of little dollops. And so that's really all I'm going to do is uh, one dollop, two dollops, and uh, job done. But, there we go, let me just get that down there so I can show you the sort of quantity I'm going to use for one clamp. Obviously if you were doing more clamps you'd need more. So, that's really all I want to get out of that. He says as he glues his fingers to the job, and uh, bear with me. So we go throw that straight in the bin so there's no fucking about here. And here we go. 
as I say, a couple of little dollops like that of the two parts. And I've always found that for a good stirrer, you just need a little old zip tie, fold it in half, and give that a good whisking up. It'll all go black, of course, because one's black, one's clear, but uh, you give that a decent whipping around. And once we've done that, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Well, right, keep it working, guys. Keep it working. Give it a minute just to make sure you get a good thorough mix. Once we've done that, we're going to get uh, some dollops of that up. There we go. Hope you enjoyed the mixing part. It's all in the technique to mix. <laughs> just messing. Anyway, uh, now, literally just uh, smooth it on. Get a good, uh, good bead of it on the go around the top of the pole. You want to work as close to the top end of the pole as you can because as you push that clamp back on it's going to smush it down a bit anyway but uh, try not to get too many uh, big lumps and bubbles just as you can see a nice good uh, smooth covering if you can so there we go so that's that and now for the, the rocket science part now we've got that on there we are literally just going to push that back on and over and give it a few turns in there give it a good few turns to spread the epoxy about We'll make sure it's done its job and now we've done that we're going to grab an old rag once again we'll get back to the same rag get that epoxy off my fingers before i stick to myself all day a um, bit of iso on there again and we're just going to use that to quickly before it sets clean off the the little bit of excess around the where the clamp sits down nice and tight and uh, there we go so we've taken off the excess Jobs are good. And happy days. Now the only thing left to do is to put the, the first section back in and uh, reassemble the, the clamp assembly. And jobs are good. So that's how to repair. Uh, this is my Extreme 25. Obviously the method is the same for all carbon fibre poles, guys. Regardless of gardeners, um, cleaning warehouse, uh, any of the others that you might use, Ionics, etc. process is the same. So, hope you found a little bit of a useful uh, information in there on how to repair your water-fed poles. Apart from that, any comments, whack them in the box below as usual. If you like what we do, please subscribe. Um, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.